Chances are, if you've shopped online for a keyboard that isn't mechanical, you've run across a Jellycomb keyboard. They're all over the place and they are highly recommended. And so I thought I would purchase one to see what it's all about in hopes that it might help you. And also because I was shopping for a new keyboard anyway and wanted to try it. So mainly for me, but also for you. The keyboard I'm using as my main keyboard right now is actually a really cheap keyboard and mouse combo that had a pretty nice aesthetic and so I purchased it for my setup but I'm not the biggest fan of it and so I did some more digging to see what I could find as far as other minimalist style keyboards and that's when I ran across the Jellycomb keyboard. The Jellycomb keyboard and mouse combo I'm using runs around $60 on Amazon and comes with the keyboard, the mouse, one of those rubber keyboard cover things, and then a micro USB cable for charging. And right out of the gate, I am not the biggest fan of charging via USB cable, um, mainly because I prefer batteries. I really like just being able to stick a battery in there and then just swapping them out really quickly once they die. And then I just keep a stash of batteries on hand so I can always have a functioning keyboard. I use my keyboard for work, um, a lot and so I tend to forget when to charge my keyboard and so if the keyboard runs out on me I don't have time to sit and wait while it charges. The keyboard and mouse come with a 2.4 gigahertz receiver but you also have the option of using Bluetooth. In fact the keyboard and mouse actually have two Bluetooth functions which I think the purpose of that is to be able to switch between two devices without losing the connection to either. And I could see this being useful if you had maybe some tasks on your computer that you were working on and some tasks on maybe a laptop or a tablet and you wanted to segment your work and so you wanted to be able to switch between the two, pick up your tablet, continue working on that um, or taking it somewhere else. So I could see it being useful for that function. And theoretically, because it has a 2.4 gigahertz receiver and then two Bluetooth options, you would be able to switch between all three devices, I think. Um, but don't quote me on that. And that is not a bad feature to have for a $60 keyboard and mouse combo. Key stabilization is fine. It's not the tightest, but it's also not wobbly like some cheap keyboards you'd see on a laptop or in some low desktop computer bundles. So it's okay, it's not too bad. Lettering on the keyboard is huge, which makes it really easy to see what you're typing, except for the fact that it doesn't have a backlight. Um, now I don't work in really dark situations typically, and so I don't need a backlight, but that might be something you wanna consider if you're looking at this keyboard and you do work in dark environments very often. Like I said, I don't, so the big lettering is just really nice to have, even if it doesn't have a backlight. The key actualization when you're pressing on the keys themselves is what you'd expect from a non-mechanical membrane keyboard, but it does have this weird frequency that's super distracting when you when you hear it. It kind of rattles with it. I'm let me see if I can give you a, a, a test of it. I don't know if you can hear that, but it really bothers me when I am typing to be able to hear that frequency. And so the only way that I've found that you can overcome this kind of rattling frequency that you hear when you're typing is to put the keyboard cover on it, which I don't really like because my fingers snag on it when I'm you know, moving to other keys on the keyboard, but it does deaden the sound and that I do like. So, you know, there is a full size numpad on the keyboard off to the right, which is really awesome because I use that all the time in my daily work. A downside to the keyboard is that there is no dedicated function lock key. Um, it is hidden underneath a um, search key, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer having my function lock key as its own dedicated key, but it's not that big of a deal because it's only one more keystroke. You just press function and then what is F13? Um, in this case, it's a search function, it's a search key, searches things on your computer, I guess, which I don't know why it's not just the Windows key. So I don't know, that part's confusing to me, but it's fine, you just press function and then the search key and that is your function lock. The keyboard layout also works for Mac and Windows. So 
depending on which operating your system you're using, you could theoretically switch between a PC and an iPad or, you know, some sort of tablet and then a Mac computer and you'd be able to work off it just fine. So that's a nice feature to have for a $60 keyboard. The mouse is fine, I guess. It's kind of scratchy on hard surfaces, so it's really annoying to use unless you have a mouse pad, but it's totally fine other than that. It has a DPI button on top, and on the back, it's got your input selector and your power button, and then the capsule to hold the 2.4 gigahertz charger. Oh, and on the front, you have the micro USB port for charging your mouse. Speaking of charging, the charger for the keyboard is at the right of the keyboard and towards the top. And while we're looking at that, why don't we just admire how thin and minimal this keyboard is. Um, I'm a really big fan of the minimalist style keyboard and I think Jellycomb did a really good job at pulling it off. Um, they also did really well on the build quality too. It's got an all aluminum back, um, which provides um, a really good heft to it as well as some rigidity. It's a cool word. It does have a plastic front, but overall the keyboard feels really high quality and premium feeling, um, certainly better than other entry level keyboards and I can get behind that. So there you have it. That's the Jellycomb keyboard and mouse combo. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below um, and be sure to get subscribed because this review is actually a smaller part in a larger video where I compare about 11 different keyboards um, that are minimalist in style to see which one is the best. So be sure you get subscribed for that content and leave a like if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.